fort where they divided up into which each team would take care of a specific job in this part of the crash. They have been on the scene, as we mentioned, since noon. may help them in their investigation to determine the cause of the accident. The wreckage was strewn out a long area, some one mile at least back from where the plane finally come to rest after hitting the ground here in the apple orchard on the Wagner farm. First heard the explosion, what did you do? Well, I looked out the window and I could see the, it looked like the whole place was on fire, this whole orchard was aflame, and <clears throat> because he'd been losing fuel for some time, he'd been in the trees for half a mile back North, on, on the north, north, he was flying south, so he was a half mile to the north. He was in the trees and he was losing the fuel. And uh, when he got this close to the ground, the fuel ignited, and this whole place was a flame back there. Did it explode also after the? There was uh, half a dozen uh, uh, minor explosions. They weren't too vicious, but uh, it made the firemen and the attendants around here to stay away from the blazes. What did you do? Did you come running out? Or? Well, I came walking out, and uh, by the, the time I got here, because I tried to call the police and uh, state the state uh, state troopers and the uh, fire departments, by the time I got out here, there was quite a number of people here already. And uh, the did airport you... fire trucks were here already, and ambulances were here already. What was the scene like? Can you describe it? Well, the plane was on fire, and the whole orchard was on fire, and there was uh, quite a few bodies lying around, and uh, the uh, firemen, of course, were trying to extinguish the flames, and uh, other folks were trying to help see in the, uh, determine who were living and who were dead and uh, removing the injured. Of course, the injured were placed in ambulances and taken into St. Elizabeth's Hospital in Covington and Booth Memorial Hospital in Covington. Did you see uh, any of the people who uh, miraculously went away from all of this? No, they walked uh, in the direction they were flying, which was south, and uh, they walked uh, into the Stevens's home up here on the Walton Road, and uh, they were removed to the hospital from there. The way he came in, uh, this is a normal approach, isn't it? He's right on the line. He's right, he's right on the line. But you say that he hit those trees all the way down? Uh, For a half mile this, back, he's been orchard. in the trees. Day, and are now, as you can see in the background, picking up small objects, pieces of the plane. Post office inspectors were here on the scene this morning where they retrieved three bags of mail which had been put on the plane in Los Angeles when the flight left last evening. There were an hour and a half after they had been here that they had retrieved all three pieces of the mail. Here in this tree, you can see a section of the wreckage which is still hanging after the crash last night. It is a piece of paneling from the inside interior cabin walls, which is left dangling in this almost vacant and bare apple tree. The cause of this tragic crash remains unknown. 
However, observing the altitude of the aircraft that has been... The cause of this tragic crash remains unknown. However, after observing the altitude of the aircraft approaching the airfield from the same direction today, it is obvious to everyone here at the scene that he just didn't have the height needed to make it to the end of the runway for his landing. As daylight came on the scene, one could look into the distance and observe the swath the plane had cut through the trees before crashing. Small pieces of the wreckage as far as a mile away can be seen. We talked this morning with Frank J. Gillespie, who is Director of Public Relations for Transworld Airlines. Mr. Gillespie told me that they had recovered the voice recorder and the flight recorder from the cockpit area of the plane. Mr. Cooley, as far as you can remember, what was the first indication of a problem, of trouble? I don't know. It's seen sparks and all the lights went out. That's about it. And those, uh, I thought it was landing. I don't know. I thought because it, it was time to land. It was approximately the right time to land, so I thought it was, we were landing. And then next thing I know, I was standing out in the snow and the plane was on fire. Did you know how you got out? Do you recall that? No, I, no, I don't. I guess I got threw out or something. I don't know. Do you recall what it was like in the cabin uh, after the plane hit? Well, what were the people doing? I don't remember too much. On I know the lights went out and, and the oxygen mask drops down from the ceiling like it's supposed to or whatever it is. And, and that was about the last I remember, the lights going out. and. I guess it must have hit my head or something. <laughs> it must have hit everything. And, and standing out in the snow the next time I remember. Then after that, fireman put me in the ambulance and I ended up here. When you were standing in the snow, how far from the wreckage were you? Had you walked away from the wreckage? I don't, I don't know how I got there. I wasn't... Not too far from there, I guess. 200 feet or so, and it started blowing up, so the fireman took us away. Do you recall um, any of the passengers trying to help you or trying to get you out also, or uh, trying to uh, get their way out themselves, make their no, way out? I, I wouldn't, I don't remember anything around the plane. Next thing I remember, I was, someone said they saw me under a tree somewhere, like maybe I got threw out into a tree or something, or around one. Because next thing I remember, I was just standing out there, and the plane was all burning and blowing up. So there was wasn't nothing you could do. Do you recall what you were doing as uh, that flight made its approach? Just looking out the window to see what I could see. Uh, there is a uh, theory, and there is evidence that the plane hit some trees and then went for at least uh, a mile uh, before it hit. Do you recall feeling a bump or...? Uh... No, I don't. I don't remember. Maybe if it did hit him, that's when I got knocked out or something. Because I don't remember going... I just remember one hit and that was it. And there was absolutely no evidence uh, or no indication of any problem? No, I, I, not that I knew of. I, Things were going pretty fast, and I just thought it was coming in for a normal landing.
Thank you very much, Janie Bishop. Uh, you certainly elected a very lovely president uh, here at Dixie Heights High School. Mike, you've had a few moments now to uh, greet some family friends. How does it feel to be back? Well, it is great. I mean, it's like, it's just like being born again. I mean, it's really, I just can't explain it. I mean, it's just, it's great. It's really wonderful to get back. People have been really, ever since I got to the Philippines, until I got here, I mean, it's just been really great. The people, just the reception that we received have just been Really, I mean, just great. Really great. What do you want to do now, now that you're back home? Well, right now, I mean, as far as the leave time, I plan on doing a lot of sightseeing. And I mean, a lot of things have changed in that. And I plan on, you know, traveling a lot. I mean, just looking around the cities and that. Covington and Cincinnati and Newport and Howland Heights. And seeing a lot of my old friends and that. And family and that. Of course, most of my family is already here. <laughs> I mean, I got a lot of friends now. I'd like to see them. And then after that, uh, I understand you might want to go back to school. All right, I plan on going to college. I'd like to take up journalism and, and history. <laughs> 